Greetings from Dr. Peter McLuhan, your host for another adventure in the life Jesus modeled. Our topic today is the man born blind. Following the transfiguration of Jesus in Galilee, he returned to Jerusalem with his disciples to celebrate the Festival of Tabernacles. Part of the celebration included remembering how the children of Israel were led by a pillar of fire by night. During the festival, Jesus cried out, I am the light of the world. By doing this, he identified himself with the fire that led the children of Israel through the desert. The leaders in Jerusalem clearly understood that Jesus was identifying himself with God. They were so furious at Jesus that they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself. He left the temple and found a man who was blind from birth, and again he said, I am the light of the world. These must have been the most encouraging words a blind man could hear. The one who lived in total darkness just met a man in whom there is no darkness, the one who lives in darkness just met a man who is the source of light. When the disciples who were with Jesus saw him talking to a blind man, they asked him the kind of question that religious people ask. Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? John chapter 9 and verse 2. Jesus gave a powerful answer. It happened to him so that you could watch him experience God's miracle. John chapter 9 and verse 3. Watching eyes opened or healed is a life-changing moment. Jesus knew that the real source of sickness in the world is the original sin of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. The Quran says... Adam and Eve disobeyed the Lord, and their life became evil. Uh, Surah 20, verse 121. The tradition that Adam and Eve wept for 40 years, and after that God forgave them, is not found anywhere in the Quran. Jesus offered himself as the payment for sin, making it possible for God to forgive all sin. In Acts chapter 10 and verse 38, we read, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, and he went about doing good and healing all were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. The disciples of Jesus were about to see a mighty miracle of God. Religious people debate who sinned. But people filled with the power of Holy Spirit know they have the answer to the problem of sickness and disease. Jesus was about to release a great miracle. Before he did that, he cried out one more time, I am the light of the world. John chapter 9 and verse 5. After saying that, he spat on the ground and made mud, and then anointed the man's eyes with that mud. This act symbolizes how Adam was made from clay, and Jesus identified himself as the co-creator of Adam with God. Jesus applied the mud just as he had made the man's eyes. Next, Jesus instructed the man to wash his eyes in the pool of Siloam. And John tells us simply that the man went and washed and came back seeing. John chapter 9 and verse 7. What a remarkable sentence. He went and washed and came back seeing. The neighbors of those who had seen him before as a beggar were saying, is this not the man who used to sit and beg? And some said, it is he. 
But others said, no, but he is like him. But the man kept saying, I am the man. John chapter 9, verse 8 and 9. Again, this resulted in a great disturbance amongst the religious people of the day. Religious people would rather follow rules than see the power of God released into people's lives. Instead of being happy for the man, they kept asking how Jesus had healed his eyes. They ended up accusing Jesus of being a sinner. So the man then spoke up and said, whether he is a sinner or not, I don't know. One thing I do know, I was blind, but now I see. John chapter 9 and verse 25. After the man said that, the religious leaders expelled him from their meetings. I've had many religious leaders try to deny that the people who have been healed through our ministry were actually healed. And yet I'm still in contact with people who were walking who could not walk before. When Jesus heard that news that the man had been expelled from the meetings, he went looking for him to help him understand how he was healed. If you have been thrown out of your religious community because Jesus healed you, he will come looking for you as well. When Jesus found the man, he asked him, Do you believe in the Son of Man? <clears throat> John chapter 9 and verse 35. Now the Son of Man was a term used by the prophets, especially Ezekiel, to help people understand who the Messiah is. The man said to Jesus, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? And Jesus said to him, you have seen him, and it is he who was speaking to you. John chapter 9, verse 36 and 37. What happened next is the most important part of this miracle story. The man said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped Jesus. John chapter 9 and verse 38. That Jesus accepted the man's worship is proof that he was God in the flesh. Frequently people write to me and say that Jesus never asked people to worship him. Of course not. Jesus did not need to ask people to worship him because when people understand who Jesus really is, they automatically worship him. The blind man knew that only God could open his eyes. He understood that Jesus was God in the flesh standing before him. The man worshipped Jesus with his whole heart. If you are the parent of a child who was born blind, do what the blind man did. Believe in Jesus and worship him. Now put your hands on the eyes of your child, and say with me, eyes be opened by the power of Jesus. Repeat it with me, eyes be opened by the power of Jesus. Right now, blind eyes are being opened. Message me and tell me what Jesus has just done for your family. Uh, the religious leaders argued if it was right to open eyes on the Sabbath. But the people said, Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. What an amazing statement. John chapter 9, verse 32 and 33. <clears throat> Do you know that even the Quran acknowledges that Jesus opened the eyes of a man who was born blind? I heal those born blind and the lepers and I quicken the dead. Surely therein is a sign for you if you did believe. al Inram, that's the third uh, surah of the Quran and ayat 49. The Quran says, opening eyes 
cleansing, le cleansing lepers and raising the dead is a sign for people if they will believe it. In this story, Jesus modeled for us that we too can pray for blind people to see. In John chapter 12, Jesus said these words, Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father. And whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. John chapter 14, verses 12 and 13. You can pray for blind eyes to be opened. The first miracle that flowed through my hands back in 2012 was for a lady who needed eye surgery. I prayed for her eyes. They were healed, and she no longer needed that surgery. It was a life-changing moment for me, and of course, more importantly, for her. One time I was preaching on healing, and a little boy raised his hands and said, I want to see with my right eye. That little boy was born with a partial cornea. We prayed for him and he was healed. The former students of our school have seen many blind eyes open as they minister around the world. You can do what Jesus said you can do. You can open the eyes of the blind. Next week, we'll continue studying the life Jesus modeled. Before I leave you, let me pray with you about a whole array of eye problems we want to begin with praying against macular degeneration. If you have macular degeneration, I command your degeneration to stop and for, your, for this uh, disease to retreat from your life. If you have a cornea separation, I command your cornea to, to uh, return to normal the way God intended for your cornea to work. You have a partial cornea like this little boy. I release to you a brand new cornea, a whole cornea from heaven like that little boy received. You're suffering from cataracts. I command those cataracts to dissolve right now and the cloudiness to go out of your vision and for you to be able to see clearly. Many people have asked me to pray for the floaters. Uh, just things that float past in your eye that are uh, troublesome to reading and to seeing clearly. I command your floaters to stop right now. Uh, many people have written to me and said, my floaters have stopped after you prayed for me. You're having double vision because of some event, some broken blood vessel, a, a heart attack or a stroke or anything like that that has affected your vision. And you having double vision right now. I command your double vision to go and for you to see clearly right now the name of Jesus. Uh, for many years I had tracking problems with my eyes. One eye didn't track properly with the other. And reading was very difficult for me. God has touched me. If you have tracking problems, I command your eyes to track together uh, so that you can be able to see uh, clearly and to read well and to advance your education. I saw a video not too long ago of a false eyeball that was transformed into a living, seeing eyeball. <clears throat> if you have a false eye, I command that eye to be healed now in the name of Jesus, to be made alive, and to be able to see again out that eye that is a false eye right now. <laughs> That's a great uh, miracle. I feel an anointing upon speaking that over somebody. Thank you, Lord, that you know how to help a man born blind. And for people who are blind, who are listening to this program, release healing to their eyes, I pray in Jesus' name. Next week, we'll continue studying the life Jesus modeled. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk with someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as $1 a month through our QR code. 
Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations to Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.